This time I'm going to show you how to make this really simple large handbag. I know it doesn't look really simple, but it's actually a very, very easy bag to make. I've kept it really bare of any kind of pockets or zips or anything like that. I do explain in the video if you wanted to put pockets on the inside or maybe one on the back, that's up to you. But this is a really, really simple make. I think the things that make it look expensive or a little bit more difficult is the size, the shape, and the way that you have the two magnetic buckles on the front to fasten this so no need to undo the buckles they're actually magnets that just close over like this and of course the fabric that i've used which is a wool blend which is perfect for bag making i think it lives a, gives a really stylish look on a smaller uh, pattern like this i haven't um matched up the pattern so there's no pattern matching with this one it, it doesn't really matter i don't think if you've got a larger check some of the other fabrics that we have on the website you may want to order a little bit of extra fabric or take more into account so that you can pattern match those if you wanted to so again these fasten over with just magnets at the bottom and i'll kind of explain as we go through the making of the bag how I do that. So I'm not going to give you exact measurements as to where to put these. I want to explain to you in my mind how I decide where they go, how I measure where they go and how it works so that if you wanted to make this bag in different sizes then you can just kind of follow the same procedure. So again instead of exact measurements I'll show you how to place them, where to place them and how to make sure that they match up with the magnetic parts in there as well. So it's only rectangles of fabric that I've used. It has been tapered. I've stiffened this with a firm fleece that we have on the website um, you will need something um, otherwise you're just going to have a floppy bag and a bag of this size it is quite nice that it stands up so some kind of firm fleecing I think is going to be necessary and apart from that I shall leave um, all of your fabric requirements and the pieces that you need to cut in metric and imperial in the description box underneath the video so have a think about what fabric you're going to use go choose it to get your materials ready and let's get sewing on my outer pieces, I've fused some firm fleece to the wrong side. This isn't a fusible fleece. Um, I've used Odo 505 to hold that in place. If you do have a fusible fleece, that would work well. The reason I like this one is because it's quite slim. It's easy to sew through. It's soft, but it does kind of stand up on its own. So we do have this on the website, on the DebbieShawSewing.com website. You don't need anything special, no special needles or anything like that to use it. Um, it's just not fusible, so you'll need some kind of spray. or that You don't need it, but that will help. So if you wanted to quilt at this point, then of course you could do that as well. Um, I personally, I'd maybe do some diagonal lines and do a bit of cross hatching on there if I was going to quilt it. Not for this one though, it's just a really quick and simple make. So I'm going to turn this over to the wrong side, purely so that I'm marking on this side because um, it's quite difficult to see on the dark fabric where I'm drawing the lines. And I'm going to measure, I'll do this in a sharpie actually so you can see it, I wouldn't normally use it, so such a thick pen but I'm just going to measure two inches from the top and then grade that down to the bottom corner and the same on this side so that's quite a thick line that I wouldn't normally use but um, just so you can see what I'm doing and then taper this down to this corner so that's going to be the shape of my bag. You could keep it square if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be a tapered bag. I just thought it added something um, to make the bag a little bit more interesting, a little bit different. So let's just cut those side pieces off. And on this one, and then we'll need to cut out the corners. So I'll use my smaller ruler for this one. So I'm going to mark two inches from the top and two inches from the bottom corner. So I'm lining up my ruler so that it's square across the bottom of the, the bag. So I will have a little bit of a triangle there, but I need to make sure that these two lines are the same measurement because they're going to be drawn together when we square the base. So let's... There's a two inch mark. There we go. Do this. And then we'll cut out these shapes.
like so. Then I'll need to cut one more from the outer fabric and two pieces using this as a template from the lining fabric as well. And then we'll take the flap piece and again on the one side I've fused my firm fleece and the other side is loose. So I'm just going to put these two pieces together and take something that is around about three inches across, doesn't have to be exact, and just use that as a template to curve the corners. So just snip that around like so. So I'm cutting through the top and bottom layers at the same time here. There we go. So apart from the strap, that's basically all of the pieces that you need for this bag. Now if you're going to put any kind of pockets inside the lining, and to be honest it might be a good idea because you've got quite a, a large bag here, I'm not going to for this, um, but if you wanted to put a patch pocket or a zip pocket or something on the inside then do that with the lining right now. And the same on the outside, um, I wouldn't put a pocket on the front, this is how it's kind of going to look and the base is going to be square like that. But if you wanted to put a zip pocket or a patch pocket on the back, then now is the time to do that. So the only other piece I need is the strap. This can be as long as you like. What I tend to do is to get the tape measure and throw it over my shoulder and just see where I think it's going to, where it's going to land. So you could make this with a short handle if you prefer. I'm going to make it as a shoulder bag. I like a shoulder bag. I like it out of my way when I'm, when I'm shopping, walking, traveling, whatever I'm doing. So this, I've already folded to the center, so fold the long sides to the center and press, and then fold in half again and press, and I'm just going to stitch down each side. So I'll do that first, and then we'll start putting the bag together. So as this isn't a seam, it can be a longer stitch. So I'll lengthen mine to a, a three on this machine, and I'm just going to sew about a quarter of an inch from each side of the strap. And then we can put that to one side for just a second. Next time we're going to make up the flap. So I'll have the two pieces right sides together. One of the nice things about this fabric, it doesn't really have a right and a wrong side, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I am going to put a couple of pins in there just to help it to stop any movement as I'm sewing. And I'm going to sew all the way around the outer edge, but leave the top section open. So let's take out those pins and I'm just going to trim into the curves and then we'll turn this the right side out. So just pull this through and then we'll give it a press and then I'll top stitch around the edge. So I'll just bring up my ironing pad. and press this nice and flat. So a little bit of steam will help there. And again, I'm just going to top stitch all the way around the top. Now you may feel um, as though the stitches are starting to get a little bit smaller as you're sewing through thicker fabric. It's purely the thickness of the fabric that could be slowing the machine down and making them look smaller. So if you need to, you can just lengthen the stitches slightly as you go. It might be quite nicer if you're, if you're using a very contrasting lining. So maybe if I'm using a bright yellow or a mustard color, I could use that color thread as well. Right. 
that and that would make a nice feature around the um, around the bag and then we can place on the buckles so I'm going to take the one half so I'm peeling away the back of the buckle here and I'm just going to measure exactly where I, I want that to be so where did I put my little ruler there we go so this now measures nine inches across and I think my buckles will look quite nice if so I want to two inches in from each end like so so a little bit of a tip for you if you have some wet glue such as 50 uh, sorry such as HT2 the glutamine glue so two inches in from the side there we go I'm just going to put a spot of glue in the center of the strap and um, if it'll come out <laughs> So I'm just going to stick a pin in the end of my glue. It's a little bit gunged up. There we go. So just in the centre. So not on the area that I'm going to stitch. And that's going to hold these in place as I sew them. And the bottom of the buckle, we want to make sure that this doesn't sit too high on the bag. So I like to sit this with the bottom of the actual buckle, even though you don't normally undo this, just on the bottom of the strap. I think that looks nice, but it keeps the... Um, keeps the strap in the right place as well. So don't glue over any kind of area where you're going to be putting hand stitches or machine stitches for that matter because this glue dries pretty solidly and um, you won't be able to get a needle through it. I have actually broken a needle on a sewing machine when I've been sewing through glued areas before so do be aware of that. So put the other one on and we'll just leave that a few seconds to dry. And then when I'm sewing, I'm just going to sew through the little holes on the side there. Um, I find it easier to do this at this stage, even though the bag's been completely constructed, because I know exactly where I'm going to place those straps now. So there we go. I did actually undo a few of the stitches at the top there so I could get my hand inside and, and sew those in place. But I could redo those if I needed to, but I think that's going to be fine. So basically you've got the end of the buckle bit sitting on the edge of the flap and then the magnetic bit is going to sit on the bag and we'll put the magnetic side on when the flap's in place so again we know that they're going to sit in exactly the right place. So these, these are ever so easy to fit. I do think I mean, there's only a few stitches going around there. The glue really does help to hold those in place. To be honest, the glue would probably be strong enough without the stitching but it does look nice when you've got the stitching on there as well. So we'll do those bits in just a second. Let's put together the rest of the bag here. So we'll have these right sides together. Like so. Actually, no, we'll put the flap on first. So whichever side is going to be the back of your bag, sorry, we'll do this first. That was going to be easier. So place this centrally over the back of the bag. So make sure that the sides here or the same distance. You can measure that if you wish. I think that's pretty fine by eye. And I'm just going to sew again close to the edge. So within the seam allowance, I'm going to use half an inch seam allowance. You can use a centimetre. So this is just to hold the flap in place while we put the rest of the bag together. And then we'll have the two pieces right sides together. So I can hold that with a few pins. You could use clips on thicker fabrics like this if you prefer. But even though this is a firm fleece, it's still really easy to sew through, to pin through. Okay, and we're going to sew down the sides and across the bottom, but leave the top open and don't sew over those cut out corners.
So pop your pins out. Then I'm going to pull open these corners and squish this so that the side seam sits over the base seam. Push those seams in opposite directions and sew straight across the end. And we'll need to do that on both corners. And then let's turn this to the right side out. And you'll really be able to see what your bag's going to look like now. So let's poke out those corners. Just make sure that all of the, oh, didn't quite catch the fabric there. Poke that one out, that one's fine. So I need to increase my seam allowance on this bit just very slightly. So it's not the end of the world when that happens. So just to show you that these things can be rectified very easily. So I'm just sewing a little bit on the inside of the seam that I've already sewn. And then let's push this back out again and just make sure that's been caught. Whoops, perfect. So now let's see where the flap's going to sit when it comes round to the front. So just fold that so that it's flat. And the flap comes over the top. Now we don't want this too tight as it comes over the top because if I get a lot of things in my bag, I don't want that to be, a, you know, to be forcing it down. So I'm going to leave a, a, an overlap there of about three quarter of an inch or so, just so that it's not too tight across the top. And then I can mark, and in fact, I'm going to go straight into gluing this on actually, exactly where the second half of the snap is going to sit. So it would be an idea to actually pop the snaps on. Make sure all of this is square. And that's sitting centrally. It's in the middle. If you want to, to measure those and just make sure that they're the same distance from each side, mine are four inches from each side now. And again, we'll take this stubborn glue and just glue this in place. Remember, not where you're going to actually sew, because you'll never get your needle through the glue. And the same on this one. Right, now I'm going to leave that to dry before I sew, because now I've glued it. As soon as I try and separate the, the magnet from the base, then it's going to pull the glue off, obviously. So I'm going to leave that until it's really secure and then undo this and then stitch around the bottom sections. And meanwhile, while that's drying, we'll put together the lining. So again, if, you've, if you put pockets on there, that's fine. If you haven't, but you think at this stage, I need a pocket, then do that now. And just like with the outer bag, I'm going to sew down the sides and across the bottom. This time I'm going to leave a turning gap here so that I can turn the whole thing the right side out. So I'm not going to pin this time. Just line up the edges, pop that under and sew. Now a little bit of a tip for you. Um, if you make the lining very slightly smaller, so increase the seam allowance slightly, it's going to fit inside the bag better. So you imagine you have your, your two pieces of fabric for the outer and your two pieces for the lining. The outer fabric has the, um, leave my turning gap, the outer fabric has the wadding behind it. So it makes the inside of the bag slightly smaller. So therefore, if you just increase your seam allowance only very slightly, it allows the lining to be the same size as the inside of the bag. At the moment, it's the same size as the outside, so it may kind of crinkle a little bit when it goes in the bag. So, not by very much, but that's, that's just a little tip for you. It might help the lining to sit nicer when you put this together. So again, just like before, I'm going to open up the corners, side seam over the base, squish the seams in opposite directions, and sew straight across. We'll do this on both sides. didn't quite cut 
and the same on this one so open it out squish and sew straight across and this one we leave inside out so now my um, snaps are glued and I've sewn these as well so they're nice and securely in place like so then we can put the strap onto the side so take your strap and this is going to go facing downwards over the side seam like so not worried about this by the way that was only to hold the flap in place that will be very secure when um, the whole bag's been sewn together so let's wrap this look like eyes don't they uh, wrap this around the bottom of the bag making sure it's not twisted and place it over the side seam on the second side here and I'm just going to stitch across the top of there to hold the strap in place So you could use the free arm, <coughs> excuse me, on your sewing machine if you wish. My um, main machine that I use doesn't have a free arm, so you kind of get used to sewing from the inside. So let's take those pins out. Make sure you don't sew over your pins. And then with the flap facing down and the strap facing down, we're going to put all of this inside the lining. So push it all in. May seem a little snug because the bag's tapered, so it's got a smaller opening at the top than the size of the base at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just making sure the strap is well and truly out of the way. I'm going to line up and straight as well, don't you go? Line up the side seam here. And the same on this side. So I'm making sure the, the strap's nice and square. And again, facing downwards. Pop a pin in there. And then... I'll hold a few more pins around the edge here, just where the flap's going to sit. I'm just making sure the pins are away from the line that I'm going to sew as well, so I don't need to keep taking them out as I'm sewing. And finally around the front. Like so. And then literally so all the way around the top. And again, you may want to use the free arm on your sewing machine while you're doing this. So just take your time. If you do need to stop, you stop with the needle in the down position, then you can manoeuvre all of this fabric to where it needs to be without losing your line of stitching. And just keep turning and sewing all the way around. Right, then out come the pins. And we'll turn this through. So I've got a lot of fabric coming through quite a small hole, so just uh, just be patient. It will come through. Oops, left a pin in there, look. There we go. We may be a little crumpled at this point. So I'm just going over my seams, making sure everything's fine, all the fabric's been caught. 
before I sew the hole up in the bottom of the bag. So just check areas like the bottom of the flap here because at this point if you do miss any fabric then you can always go back in again and um, and sew over it like we did with the corner earlier on. So I'm pulling the two sides of the lining away from each other to encourage the edges to roll in and then sew the opening closed. If you wanted to make that really neat or invisible then of course you could hand sew that if you prefer. There we go. And then the lining goes inside the bag. What are you doing down there? Huh? I've got a dog up. She doesn't normally come down here. I've got a dog at my feet. Hello, sweetie. Hello. So let's push this inside. And we'll give that a quick press. If you have a tailor's ham, uh, that's ideal for pressing bags like this because you can kind of press them without pressing them flat, if that makes sense. We don't want a two-dimensional bag. But otherwise, just take your iron and iron around the top on the inside, I find the best way. So I've got a bit of steam going on there. I want the seam to sit right on the top, which does mean that um, the fleece is folded over at the top. So it may be quite thick there, but do, do persevere, it'll work. And then just let's take that thread off. Um, fold in the side sections here. Now when you come to top stitch, this is going to be quite thick over that seam. So you may have to turn your hand wheel by hand. We'll have a look at that in just a second. So let's just pull all of this out of the way. So again, I'm just going on the inside and I'm trying to press this so that the seam sits there. It is fighting back at the moment but it will be fine when that's top stitched. I want the seam to be right on the edge like so. So here we go. So again, I'm going to lengthen my stitch up to a 30 on this one. And let's pop this under. And I'm going to be really careful as I sew. Again, it is quite thick. And I'm going to pull at this point, the flap away from the bag. So the lining's nice and flat, and the outer bag is nice and flat as well. So just keep, again, take your time with this. Take control, and just keep sewing. Now this is the bit that's getting very bulky with the straps. So if you find your machine is struggling a little bit, when you come up to the thicker part, turn it by hand as you go over there and stitch slowly. Um, this machine's okay actually, it's not too bad. And another tip would be to use a denim um, or a jeans needle because those needles are stronger. So when you do have lots of layers like this, you're going to get a neat stitch. So again, take your time. Again, you can use your free arm on the machine if you prefer. And I'm just lining this up as I go, just trying to get that seam on the edge all the way around. So coming back to the second handle here. So again, another thick bit. So don't worry about what's going on here. It's what's going under the needle that's important. So again, rather thick there. Keep the strap out of the way as you're going. And we are back to where we started. So I'm just re-pushing the lining back into the bag. I don't think that actually needs another press, but if you do need to, then um, again, use a roll-up towel or your um, tailor's ham to push it inside there to help the bag to keep its shape. 
And that is my little bag finished. So as you can see, it is the style of bag is actually very simple. You can make that more complicated. You could add um, a slider to the handle or to the strap if you wanted it to be adjustable. And as I said previously, you can put pockets on the inside as well. I think the things that two things that make this look like an expensive bag are the fabric that I've used, which is a wool blend and the hardware on the front as well. And again, if you wanted to change that up, if you haven't got the hardware, then you could just put a magnetic snap just underneath the flap here so you don't see any of that. But I think any kind of metal work or hardware on bags like this just gives it a really lovely shop bought look. Um, a D-ring maybe at the side would g again give it another um, shop bought look, just give it that, you know, the, the more expensive kind of look. But I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Again, for a bag that I, s I think is so useful, so big and so stylish, it's nice to have a bag that is a really, really simple make as well. So if you're making to sell, I think you'll be able to charge a pretty penny. And if you're making this a as a gift, somebody's going to really appreciate it. And if you're making this for yourself, then well done. You deserve it. I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.